Genial. And one person who knows more than most when it comes to competing up and down the dales is Alex Wilkes. Come on, girls. Let's go. Come on. Alex keeps 12 dairy cows on her small farm in Laban in Wensleydale. And there's one show she always looks forward to at the start of the summer. My favourite has to be the Yorkshire show. It's the first show I went to where you're away for a few days and I actually class it as a holiday. While most people pack up their sun cream and flip-flops and head off on holiday, Alex is digging out her cow clippers and suitcase, ready for her yearly trip to the Great Yorkshire Show. It's the biggest agricultural event in the country and is held in Harrogate over three days. Animals of all shapes and sizes will be pruned, brushed and even blow-dried in the hope that they can win top prizes for their owners. Despite entering the show for the last 16 years, Alex has only ever won one class. And even though this year she's entering four cows in different classes, she still doesn't think she's in with a chance of winning. I'm competing against some herds with 100 cows in them, but I'm there for the entertainment and the social life. <laughs> it's the day before the show, and Alex's four cows need to undergo a radical makeover, so they're ready for competing in just 24 hours. Cattle showing isn't just about picking the best-looking cows from your herd. There's lots of preparation that goes into making them look their best. And yes, she is actually hoovering a cow. But the real piece de resistance is the top lining, which is done as late in the day as possible. The idea is as straight as possible. They brush the, the coat up and spray it into position and then trim it and make it look rather tidier. The professional top liner in question is Wendy Young. The top lining basically is to enhance the animal when it goes into the ring. It's the uh, first impression that the judge sees that's the most Im important bit. So a straight level top line that shows the animal off to its best abilities. What we're looking for, basically. I started at about the age of 16, just doing show cows at home. And then uh, about six years since decided to do it as a full-time career. So, does Wendy think Alex stands any chance of winning? He's gonna be in the top three in at least two classes, is my prediction. You heard it here first. It'll be a miracle if I win. It'll never happen. This summer, we've been following the story of young Philip Mellon. At 16 years of age, he's just left the classroom behind so he can take on the running of the family farm with his mother, Carol. They both suffered a huge loss last year when Phil's father and Carol's husband, Albert, sadly passed away. Glorious weather we're having. Couldn't be better. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Hello. I'm Adrian. Hello, yeah, right. nice pleased to meet you. To meet you. This right, is Philip. You all right? How are you doing? Not so bad. And these are your two dogs, are yes. they? Yes. Yes. Hi, that's mine and that's my mother's there. Is it? All right. Yeah. I've had sheep myself. I had about 30 sheep. Jess. And... Jess. I Come never here. had a dog. Jess. Right. So Why how did you manage? I had children. <laughs> <laughs> did you have them on the whistle? <laughs> well, I used to bribe the sheep with food. Uh, I mean, three days of bribing yeah. and then you'd get them for <laughs> the bucket, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I suppose this is quicker. Once you've been used to working with a sheepdog, you'll never, ever imagine working without one. Yeah. You wouldn't. Oh, they're just... Yeah. You learn so much off them all the time. And uh, they always say as well that if there's a fault with a sheepdog, it can generally be the person that's put it there. It? It's, it's so nice just to stand back and, and yeah, watch a dog walk. working by themselves. Oh, hang on, we're off again. <laughs> yes! <laughs> They are, the, uh, the collies are the better breed for working sheep because yeah. it's just natural to them. So if you left them for an hour in this field with these sheep, what would they do? If we moved into a corner, they'd naturally bring them to us. Mm. Come on, let's walk yeah. to the corner yeah. and see if it happens. Without saying no anything to them. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? <laughs> OK, this way. <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. That yeah. is uncanny. <laughs> that is fantastic. It's great to see the dogs at work, but it's young Philip's seemingly natural ability with them that I find fascinating. I trained my first one maybe six years ago, and Did I you? sold that down at Skipton Auction. That was a dog that I bred out of my own bitch, and I kept it. So the people who are buying them, not 
not look at you and think, you know, he's only a lad. A good dog will sell well. Like, they can go up to £5,000 with a really good dog. Yeah. You seems quite <laughs> cocky. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want to live with him. <laughs> so, are you pleased with Phil's progress? Yeah, he's a natural. He really is. But Philip's brought in this dog himself and he's done a really, really good job on it. I mean, saying that, it is a, it is a quite an exceptional dog. I mean, not all dogs will turn out like these. You know, you just sometimes to make best with what you've got. I have plenty of work to keep him quiet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> can you drive his tractor on the road then? Yeah. So he can get down to the local disco in his tractor. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's not interested in drinking, smoking, I tell women. You what? He is. <laughs> We're in the hills of Richmond, in the north of the Dales. And these are high fashion sheep. Designer Izzy Lane rescues lambs and sheep that would otherwise be sent for slaughter. Off they go. With the help of her shepherd friend, Ernest Eyre, she buys the animals from local farmers and then uses their wool to pay for their keep. The quality of the Shetland wool and the Wensleydale wool is, is second to none, really. Beautiful for hand knitting. Over the centuries, sheep farming has shaped the landscape of the Dales. But this is definitely a new way of doing things. To my knowledge, there's nobody else doing it on this sort of scale anywhere in the world. It's quite an interesting juxtaposition of the, you know, the world of high fashion and then sitting here with all these dirty little sheep. <laughs> Summer is the busiest time of year for Izzy. It's now that she creates her autumn winter collection. Because our fabric is wool, it's the winter collection that's really important. You know, making the coats and the jackets and the warm sweaters. So how does it all happen? Well, early in the season, the sheep are sheared and the fleece is sent off to my hometown, Bradford, to be spun into yarn and woven. He hasn't clipped too by the fleece, actually. When the cloth comes back, that's when the magic happens. A pattern cutter turns raw material into finished products like this skirt. I'm coming to hold. These clothes are being made for the biggest day of Izzy's fashion calendar, the photo shoot for her new collection. While all the fun's going on, Ernest has a chance to reflect on the serious side of things. This is what it's all about. You know, the sheep's being rescued from, you know, from imminent death as the, you know, they would have been slaughtered. Isabel saved them. We've taken the fleece from them and it's gone into these beautiful clothes. What more satisfaction could you get? Right, that's my fashion show done for the day. So back to the usual grind now on the day job. So with Ernest's work complete, there's just time for the team to take some final shots. That's nice. Has the day been a success for Izzy? The most memorable part of the day was the grey Wensleydale cardigan and it just looked stunning, a really iconic photo with that backdrop. Touch Wool is going to be a collection Izzy, Ernest and the most fashionable sheep in the Dales can all be proud of. <laughs>